We just received information that Gonzalo Lopez has been captured and is deceased. A couple of weeks ago comes to a dramatic end. Katrina Weber has the latest this noon. SAISD bus drivers choking through some smoke to get an important lesson in fire safety. Tiffany Huertas has details this noon. Live from KSAT at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Enough is enough. That's the message from local leaders when it comes to gun violence. They came together today for a joint press conference outlining county strategies and initiatives aimed at tackling the issue. Erica Hernandez was there and she joins us now live. Erica, give us a rundown of what you learned. Yeah, Ursula, well, county leaders are angry and they want something done now by the state legislator to help with and curb gun violence. Now, county changes and initiatives are going to be put in place right away from the district attorney's office to commissioner's court. Judge Nelson Wolf laying out what he believes legislator needs to be doing, and that is raising the age from 18 to 21 to buy semi-automatic weapons, pass a red flag law, require training to obtain a firearm, require background checks and state funding for school security upgrades and he says if the legislator isn't going to get this done let the people decide on what to do the state leaders do not want to take action on gun violence then call an election Commissioner's Court will be voting next week on more initiatives as well, including funding for gun lots and more funding for mental health. Now, we'll have more on this press conference later today, including what the district attorney's office will be doing and some laws or some charges for those who may be violating gun right laws, what those will be looking like from his office. We'll have more on that later. David, Ursula. Thank you, Erica. The Uvalde community continues to honor the victims of last week's shooting at Robb Elementary. This afternoon, services will be held for Jacqueline Cesarez, and this morning, services started for Jela Nicole Seguiro and J.C. Carmelo Lovento's loved ones are also remembering two other victims today. Visitations are set to be held. We've got the details on KSAT.com. In the meantime, the investigation into the Uvalde shooting continues to develop. Right now, State Senator Roland Gutierrez is telling us that 911 calls made by the children inside Robb Elementary were only sent to Uvalde police, not to Pete Arredondo, the school district police chief and the commander on scene at the time of the shootings. Arredondo has been criticized for his response that day. Gutierrez says the Commission on State Emergency Communications told him that Aridando did not know about the calls even. He called it a system failure on several levels, including with leadership at the legislative level. The mayor of Uvalde has said more mental health resources are needed, but went further this week by saying the gun issue also needs to be addressed. Outside with live cam, we're pushing 90, it's 12.05. It's going to be, an, at least the clouds are out so we don't get sunburned completely. We even have a storm out there. We, we do. We actually have some showers trying to develop. There was a lot of sun earlier, and now the clouds are starting to shift in along an outflow boundary. This outflow boundary has been enough to kick up a shower here in far northwestern Bear County. But this is the problem we're having. As quickly as these things pop up, they're falling apart and just not lasting very long and not putting down a ton of rain. But we still have one little shower there near Holotus and uh, just south of San Geronimo along 16 there where uh, we are seeing a little bit of rain. This may continue to work off to the uh, south and southeast as this outflow boundary works a little bit closer to San Antonio. Our hope is that we could get a little bit more activity along that boundary as it moves through this afternoon. And the computer models are still hinting at that. Rain chances are going to be low. It's still 20 percent, but we Hopefully we'll see at least a little bit more on the radar. We need the rain so desperately. As we look at the big picture here, there is that outflow boundary right there. We can see it very clearly with the cloud cover and then a couple of showers developing along it as well. Behind it, another couple of boundaries up here that may try to drift in a little bit later today too. So there's some opportunity here. We've just uh, got to kind of get lucky, if you will, on timing and we can get some heating and there are more clouds trying to develop out ahead of this boundary so there could be a few more showers even south of san antonio we'll keep an eye on all of it for you there's a big spin here in the northern part of the state and it's behind that where we're seeing some of that energy move from the northwest down to the south and east into our area so the forecast for today 
91 by 2 o'clock, 20% chance of rain into the afternoon. We'll keep that going into this evening. If you have plans, again, it's, it's a small chance, but it is there. 95 by 6 p.m. Even going into tonight, we're going to keep some rain chances in. We're going to watch what happens up across West Texas as some of that energy could work into our area tonight. But after tonight, rain chances go away and temperatures heat up. A look at that weekend forecast in those blazing hot temperatures next week coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. People in a Jordanton neighborhood are feeling a bit safer today after a frightening night. Many watched as a statewide manhunt for a 46-year-old killer came to a deadly end, practically in their backyards. Police and sheriff's deputies in Jordanton shot and killed escaped inmate Gonzalo Lopez during a gun battle last night. As Katrina Weber tells us, for one man, it stirred up thoughts of other recent violence. The end of the road for an escaped inmate came in the middle of a Jordanton neighborhood. Law enforcement officers there spotted 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez, a convicted murderer who escaped from a prison bus last month, driving a stolen truck late last night. They used spike strips to try to stop him. The suspect stuck a rifle out of the window of the truck and fired several shots. He turned on this street here, which is Cypress. Investigators say that led to a short chase, with things turning even more violent. The sheriff says after Lopez fired at the officers the first time, he came across this field where he knocked down this telephone pole. He then traveled across over here where he hit a second pole. He exited his truck. He, he fired additional rounds. Uh, at least four officers returned fire. Lopez was hit and killed. All of this came hours after Lopez, already serving life for capital murder, killed again. Investigators say he broke into a home yesterday, about 250 miles away in Centerville, and murdered five people, including four children, then drove off in their pickup. It's the same truck he was driving when he ended up in Jordanton. I was asleep, you know, and then I went to the restroom, and then I, I, I saw all the police ones. I said, oh, my God. There's going to be another, you know, Uvalde. Valdez took cover inside his home during the violence. Later, he reflected on what police say Lopez did to others. He killed five innocent people. Mm. Right now, he's burning in hell. The Texas Rangers now are investigating it all. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, a 13-year-old boy shot and killed by police on the southwest side. This after SAPD says that he crashed a stolen car into an officer's patrol vehicle. It happened early this morning when police were called to a neighborhood near Old Pearsall Road in Loop 410, investigating reports of gunshots. When police officers found the suspect's vehicle, they tried to pull the driver over, but instead... Police say that the driver, a 13-year-old boy, slammed into the marked patrol vehicle. SAPD says an officer was afraid that the suspect may ram into another officer's car, so he fired at that suspect. The teen suspect taken to the hospital. That's where he later died. Two other people were inside the suspect vehicle. They were not hurt. Local bus drivers trained this morning on what to do in case of an emergency. San Antonio ISD bus drivers learning how to evacuate a bus filled with smoke and what to do during a vehicle accident. Tiffany Huertas has a look at what these bus drivers went through and how it will help them keep students safe. With little visibility, school bus drivers let people out of the smoke-filled bus safely. We have electrical fires going on over here. We got an uh, actual vehicle uh, roll over here. About 240 SAISD bus drivers and monitors attended a training this morning. We actually have a train accident where the bus is laid over completely on its side. During an emergency situation like this one, bus drivers are told to remain calm and guide students to safety. Drivers from Uvalde CISD were also invited and were presented this plaque. Even though you may be in a different school district, we're all part of one big family of transportation. Sylvia Udiegas has been a bus driver for seven years at Uvalde CISD and says these kids become family. We see the kids uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, most of them. So yeah, we get to know them. And some of the bus drivers have had the same route since they were like in pre-K till sixth grade. While the community in Uvalde continues to heal from the recent tragic shooting, transportation staff says it's important to do these trainings and keep the kids safe. You're the first person they uh, see in the morning, early in the morning, and you're the last person they see in the afternoon. Yeah. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. 
$2 million now going to those affected by the tragedy in Valley to help them pay bills and rent during this difficult time. Philanthropist Kim Rapier Barrett made the donation this morning. Half the money will go directly to the families who've lost loved ones and the rest will be divided among others who are dealing with injuries as well as nonprofits and the community. Boston pulls an historic comeback. Larry Mirrors has the highlights from last night's game one. If you've got weekend plans, don't let road closures throw you. After the break, what you need to know if you're hitting the road around town. Gas made prices may be high, but that won't stop folks from hitting the road this weekend. If you've got plans around town, there are some road closures that could get in your way. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos explains how to get around those roadblocks. It is finally the weekend, and if you have travel plans, make sure to plan your commute accordingly. Let's talk about what we're going to be seeing here. There are several active construction spots still taking place. Bridge work. Now, this has been current. Uh, according to Texas, though, it should wrap on June 5th. That's over off I-10 on the east side of San Antonio. During that time, it's going to be overnight, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. During that time, drivers expect a full main lane closure in both directions at FM 1518 and FM 1516. Let's go ahead and take a drive over here to Loop 1604 over on the northwest side of San Antonio. Tons of work that's always taking place out there, but this time we're going to be seeing some gas utility work. That is current and that should be wrapping up on Sunday, June 5th. It will take place at 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, according to TechStop. Now, keep in mind, there's going to be a full closure of the entrance and exit there at UTSA, the main campus, and Brennan Avenue, also including the Loop 1604 intersection. Then happening on Sunday, June 5th, up until Tuesday, June 7th, we'll see some bridge repairs over off I-10 on the central side of San Antonio. Thankfully, it's overnight, so it won't really impact a lot of traffic, but keep in mind, it's going to take place all the way up until 5 in the morning. There'll be multiple westbound main lane closures right there at Frio Street. And of course, for any of the latest closures taking place in your area, head over to ksat.com slash traffic and scroll down to the closure page. Back to you. For a closer look at all those road closures, you can go to ksat.com. And you can just scan that QR code right there that's on your screen. Quick. Exciting times in the weather department today because there is some rain here and there. Is that rain off in the distance I see there on the left-hand side? It looks that way, at least some light rain. We've got some showers try, trying to build as an outflow boundary comes into San Antonio. We had one of those yesterday. It didn't do anything for us. Today we're a little more hopeful. Uh, the aquifer still needing some help. It is down today half a foot to 642.8. We're getting awful close to that 640 mark. In your pollen counts, just molds, they're moderate at 560. We're going to look at the radar and get you an update on where some of that rain is headed coming up. Did, did he say rain? He did, and I washed my car today, oh. so I'm taking full credit. <laughs> you got Maybe it. that's the key. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the problem is we are talking about it, yes, but just like yesterday, most of us, are going to stay dry. Uh, these chances are low. I just think we're so desperate for rain, right? We're looking for anything there on the radar. And we did find a pop up shower or even a storm there in far northwestern reaches of Bear County, but it's already gone. And that's kind of the nature of this activity it pops up pretty quickly and then goes away. So it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. As we zoom in a little bit closer here, uh, that, that cell that we had that was right there in the Medina Bear County line has already fallen apart. So just a few showers left there along 16 as you're coming uh, into Bear County and uh, down towards San Antonio. Otherwise, we've got a couple of more showers trying to pop up along this outflow boundary, which, by the way, is about right there. We can kind of pick it up on radar, but around Canyon Lake, starting to see a few more pop up showers. Again, these won't last very long, but with these boundaries around today, there's a possibility we could see more of this activity popping up into the afternoon. At least that's the hope uh, as we get later into today. Uh, there's the scene outside, and it does look like uh, we're looking off in the distance at some of those showers that we were looking at on radar up there near Canyon Lake. More clouds building, and that'll help us with temperatures. So that may keep temperatures down just a little bit. So we're looking at some of the positives here. 88 degrees at the airport, and now mostly cloudy after a mostly sunny morning. Dew point is at 67, and we've got calm winds. 
enough humidity out there to generate some heat indices. Feels like 91 at the airport. Feels like 89 in Converse. Feels like 95 in Stinson. That's one of the warm spots. Feels like 92 currently in New Braunfels. And the satellite picture, I think, kind of tells the story a little bit better. You can see that cloud line, and that is the outflow boundary, okay, as it's moving south and east. And that was put down from an earlier complex of showers and storms that moved across north Texas. And we're starting to see some clouds build in behind it. So that's encouraging. These uh, cumulus clouds, if they can build up into some showers and storms, that's, that's what we're looking for. Also some development, it looks like, trying to get going out ahead of the line. As we zoom out some, you'll get a better idea here. So there's swirl in the atmosphere. That's the disturbance moving across Texas. There's outflow boundary number one. I think we've got another one back here that is going to try to move through this afternoon. And this is what the models seem to be picking up on. This secondary boundary may be pushing in this afternoon and giving some more lift. Uh, and the, the big picture here across Texas, you can see the, the twist in the atmosphere. But the flow with high pressure out across Mexico does kind of want to steer some of this down towards us. If we can get more development out across West Texas today, which is possible, scattered severe weather out there, then some of that could make its way down towards San Antonio also tonight. So that's something else we'll be watching. The, the Storm Protection Center does have us in an isolated risk for severe weather. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Gusty winds would be the main threats with any strong storms that we see. So as we go forward in time here, this is around 5 o'clock, the models have been very consistent in showing some of these pop-up storms so we're going to put in a 20% chance of rain tonight. Some of those storms coming out of West Texas could hold together. They'll probably be lumping in at this point by tomorrow morning, but we'll keep in a 20% chance of rain for that as well. And then after that, rain clears out and things heat up. So the case at 12 hour forecast, 20% chance of rain through the afternoon. We keep that going right into tonight. It'll be a toasty evening, 93 at 7 o'clock. Still in the 80s with a 20% chance of rain, 10 o'clock, 11 p.m and midnight. Very quickly, we do need to talk, talk about potential tropical cyclone one. It's a mouthful, but basically this is going to become tropical storm Alex, we think, as it moves towards Florida. And regardless of whether it's named or not, it's going to have some winds at around 40 miles per hour as it crosses over Florida. But the big story will be uh, the rainfall. We think eight to nine, maybe even 10 inches of rain possible across southern parts of Florida. That'll be the, the big takeaway, but it stays away from us. And as I mentioned, after tonight and tomorrow morning, things dry out and things really heat up. 101 Sunday, 103 on Monday, which could be a record, guys. Just too hot. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. And so were the Celtics. I was going to say, speaking of hot, <laughs> I got hot in the fourth quarter last night, didn't I? Yeah, they were down 12 going into the fourth. I'll be honest, I almost turned the game off because I'm like, oh. Golden no. State. Yes, yeah, seriously, Golden you State had all that. the it's momentum. NBA, but then, like David says, <laughs> I know better than that. So I kept watching, and what do you know? The Boston Celtics stormed back in the fourth quarter, and Derek White was right there leading the way. And in the WNBA, Becky and her aces suffered their first home loss of the season coming up. Um, I mean, the road is the time where it's just us. Um, we come together as a group. Um, we know it's just us versus, versus them in, in their arena. So um, we enjoy playing on the road. Um, I mean, it's a tough place to play and a uh, big game one, and we just got to be a little greedy and try to get this game too. Derek White and the Celtics storm back to win game one of the NBA Finals in Big Board Sports. <laughs> Celtics forward Al Horford was flexing and blowing kisses after Boston's incredible comeback at Golden State last night. The Celtics trailed 92-80 entering the fourth, and it looked like the Warriors had all the momentum, but they didn't. Boston got hot shooting 68% in the final frame. They made nine three-pointers at just two for the dubs. To outscore them 40 to 16 over the final 12 minutes. Derek White scored six of his 21 points in the fourth. Horford 11 of his team high 26 came in the fourth. The Celtics rode the most lopsided fourth quarter in NBA Finals history to win game one on the road, 120 to 108. Yeah, um, I mean, they got off in that third quarter and uh, we had to come together and um, slow them down. I mean, we, we changed defense up a little bit, um, made them work and then got the stops and got out and run. So it was a lot of fun and um, we got to watch the film, learn from the mistakes we made and, and get better for game two. Yeah, that's kind of who we've been all year. Uh, tough grinders, you know, resilient group that we can always, always know we can rely on our defense to kind of buckle down when needed. Steph Curry led the Warriors with 34 points, but 
He only scored four in the fourth. Golden State let game one slip away, and it hurts. Obviously, you know, everybody's down. You want to you want to go out and uh, win the first one. And, and uh, we had every opportunity, you know, 12 point lead going into the fourth. So guys are bummed, uh, as you would expect. Um, but uh, it's a uh, it's a seven game series for a reason. Um, I think, you know, you uh, you give Boston credit. They came in there and and uh, and earned the win, played a great fourth quarter. Game two is Sunday night at 7 from the Chase Center in San Francisco, and it's live here on KSAT 12. In the WNBA, Becky Hammond and her Las Vegas Aces suffered their second loss last night and first one at home this season, falling to the Connecticut Sun 97-90. The Aces made a late charge, but they could not overcome a big first quarter hole when the Sun outscored them 37-22. Obviously, uh, not the first quarter that we wanted. Um, you know, Pretty evenly, um, but when you start off, you know, 19 now, it's, you're just scratching, crawling, doing everything to get back into the game. So we put ourselves in hole, you know, and I said it earlier, and you know, we kind of tiptoed into a bar fight, that's for sure. The Aces are now 9-2 and two on the season, and will look to rebound when they host the Dallas Wings Sunday at 5 p.m. I wonder if she sounds a little like pop after a loss like that when they go to the locker room. I can hear it a little <laughs> bit at the podium, yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Today marks 100 days since Russia invaded Ukraine. President Vladimir Zelensky saying Moscow has control over one fifth of his country. Thousands of people are estimated to have died in this war. 12 million civilians have been forced to leave their homes. The focus now is on the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine, where Russian forces are taken over by more than 80 percent. Ukrainian troops continue to fight back in the east in hopes of recapturing their territory. The United States also continues to send aid as Ukrainian officials plead for more military support. For more than 100 days now, WNBA's Phoenix Mercury star Brittany Griner has been in Russian custody. And now the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, wants the public to help bring her home. Russian authorities arrested Griner at the Moscow airport in February, claiming to have found cannabis oil in her luggage. A press conference held in San Francisco by Silver yesterday urged people to contact their representatives in the hopes to speed up Griner's release. The WNBA Players Association created a website with a petition calling for her release. Visitors can sign it on bg.org. And the end of Social Security checks could be less than 15 years away. An annual report says Americans will stop getting the full benefits if Congress doesn't act soon. Combined Social Security trust funds help support payouts for the elderly and disabled, but they are estimated to run out in 2035, leaving Medicare Part A to pay out only until 2028. The end of Social Security has been a concern for decades. Yesterday, a Social Security official said Congress needs to raise revenues by a third, cut costs by a quarter, or some combination of the two. According to the United States government, many employers added to their teams this year. 390,000 jobs were reported in May, showcasing a blooming but slower pace of hiring. While the number of jobs added from April's total were down, it was still better than what analysts predicted. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate stayed at 3.6 percent. That percentage is a little bit higher than the low percentage recorded in February of 2020 before the pandemic hit. And it's a level considered by many economists to be full employment. Outside with live can, a few spot showers here and there, maybe a little line of them coming through. Try that. Try it. We're not seeing much here in San Antonio, quite honestly. And that line of cloud cover, too, that was going to help and block out the sun, already starting to move through. We're starting to see more sun again. So let me show you the satellite picture, and you'll get a good idea of where this outflow boundary is uh, working its way through San Antonio as we speak. And there have been a few showers, a few pop ups right along the boundary itself, but not much. That uh, pop up we saw there in northwestern Bear County has now fallen apart. Seen a few showers here in Kamal County, and then that uh, cloud line extends to the west, Hondo, Yavaldi to Del Rio, but no rain associated with it. There is another boundary back here that uh, may shift in a little bit later this afternoon and could give us a few more showers and storms, but it's just it's going to be few and far between. The uh, better chances of rain are up here with this big swirl you see across uh, northern parts of Texas. 
a piece of energy coming through uh, moving west to east and it's behind it where there are some clouds trying to develop and we could see a few more storms again uh, later today. Uh, as we look at the radar, we can actually pick out that boundary right there. We've had a few showers around Canyon Lake. Those have already dissipated and uh, not much showing up here around San Antonio. So our case 12 hour forecast, 20% chance rain 3 o'clock, 93, 96 at 5 p.m. If you have plans this evening, should be just fine. You may want to take an umbrella just in case there small chance of a pop up happens where you are. 93 by 7 p.m. and it will be slow to cool down as it is this time of year. 85, 10 o'clock, 82 by 11 p.m. Some record challenging heat heads our way after today. Another look at the seven day forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. A uh, San Antonio eighth grader doing the Alamo City just as proud as can be. How she earned a trophy, a cash prize, and a shout out from the mayor coming up. Also coming up, O'Connor getting ready for the state semifinals. Larry Ramirez with a preview. Summer in Texas means high temperatures, but it also means grilling and smoking. And while you may be the pit master at your household, there's always more to learn. A look at the classes that are being offered in town that could help you beef up your skills. Guy Diang. G-A-Y-D-I-A-N-G. Parison. P-A-R-I-S-O-N. Eximer. E-X-E-I-M-E-R. Rini, you correctly spelled a total of 21 confirmed correct words. That means that, Harini, you are the 2022 Scripps National Spelling Bee Champion. Wow. Can't hardly say them that fast, <laughs> much less spell them that fast. A big congratulations to Ernie Logan, the San Antonio 8th grader, won the Scripps National Spelling Bee and clinched the top prize. She won the Bee's first ever lightning round tiebreaker. You saw there, she spelled 21 words correctly in just 90 seconds. That was just incredible. Harini will be bringing home the trophy and more than $50,000 in cash and prizes. She was a four-time participant in this bee and a sentimental favorite who endured the pandemic to compete again in person for the first time since 2019. And Mayor Ron Nirenberg also extended his congratulations to the winner. In a tweet, he said, Harini is the first San Antonio student to advance to the final round in the history of the Scripps B way to represent our city. We need to hear more about this young lady. Yeah, she's something. Father's Day is June 19th. The summer officially begins on June 21st. So that means it's going to be prime grilling and meat smoking season. That's right. You already know barbecue is at the top of the food pyramid here in Texas. Well, many of us have tried our hand at smoking brisket at home. As Mark Austin explains, there's now a chance for you to raise your game and become a certified backyard pit master. Let's be honest, brisket can be a bit intimidating done right, this smoked hunk of heaven is the signature of an accomplished pit master. These folks are paying $89 for a three-hour weekend class called Brisket U, as in university. They're learning the basics from trimming a brisket and selecting the right firewood to carving your creation correctly. Brisket U is the brainchild of two advertising guys in Houston, John and Mike. We came up with the idea of let's create a university and teach people how to do it in their backyard. And let's do it at a brewery in the mornings when they're not so busy, we'll bring in people into the breweries and let them grab a beer and beer and barbecue, perfect you know, marriage. Any given weekend, Brisket U is holding up the 10 classes in various cities. Uh, if you're new to barbecue, Chris Malloy is the San Antonio pit master and his classes stay pretty full. You know, we've found it really is a wide variety. We've had chefs from all over the country come in to, you know, folks that are coming in that don't even have a barbecue pit yet. and. What we've tried to do with our classes is really gear it towards everyone. So you could have cooked 100,000 briskets, and I think you'll still pick some things up to apply to help you out. Or you can have never even seen a brisket before and, and really start your journey off with a lot of really good knowledge. Lisa and Steve Baginski came down from Illinois. It was amazing. Like awesome. I feel like we learned a whole lot of stuff. Like we've done some briskets, but like not clearly not correctly. So now we know what we're doing. These classes make great gifts. That's how I found out about Brisket U. I took their brisket class and their ribs class. Next on my list, Seafood U. We bring in uh, salmon, redfish, a lot of local seafood, and we teach you how to treat that fish, how to, how to clean it, how to trim it up, how, and then different, different ways 
of cooking it and you'll get five different dishes in there. It's, it's a lot of fun. In most cases, you get to sample the final product. Graduates get something else worth its salt and pepper, confidence. So again, we created this so that, you know, when your neighbor or your brother-in-law is looking over your shoulder telling you you're doing it wrong, you can say, hey, back off, I'm certified. <laughs> so we knew Mark was certified. Yeah. Certifiable. No, certified. Certified in cooking. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. We're having lunch at Mark's this weekend. Right? Right. Right, Mark? All right, for more information on those classes or how to give them as a gift, you can go to brisketu.com. Tomorrow's Chicken U class sold out, but there's still a seat available for you if you want to check out the Sunday Ribs U. Ooh. That's what I would like. Brisket U up and running in most large cities in Texas. Just expanded over to Nashville and is coming soon to Charlotte. Catching you, on. You got to take lots of water with you, though, just for yourself. It's true. As hot as it outside. Stand next to that grill. Ooh, Can you imagine good. just throwing out your diploma? I'm a certified yeah. meat smoker. Hello. Yeah. I'm good at this. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Uh, 88 degrees. Uh, here in uh, San Antonio so far today, 76 to low this morning. Records are 148. Got down to 48 back in 1919. That sounds like uh, a distant memory, real, very distant. Uh, nothing like that in the forecast. In fact, we've got more heat headed our way. Your forecast straight ahead. Looking outside, you better enjoy the weather today because I don't like this long-term forecast that we're looking at. We're going to put together a string of triple-digit days. Oh, it's days. brutal looking. We could be breaking some records, too. I mean, we already did that in May. You would hope that June would, you know, bring something different. It's not. It's not. Uh, we do have a few chances for showers today. That's kind of the one glimmer of hope. The one thing we're holding out for, but uh, the chances today are low. They're not great. As we look at the time lapse, yeah, this kind of tells a story. I had clear skies this morning, boom, right there. The clouds moved in, that outflow boundary, and now they're already starting to clear out again. 88 degrees at the airport. Calm winds. Dew point is at 67. And we have a little bit of a heat index out there. Feels like it's in the low 90s this shower. Radar, we've been watching it very carefully. We had a couple of showers pop up in northwestern Bear County earlier. That outflow boundary is still there. So conceivably, we still could see another pop up shower. Looks like we have a very light shower there on the far west side of the county. And we're starting to see some development up I-35 over towards, uh, well, Bastrop, just east of I-35. This afternoon with some heating, it's possible we can get a couple more uh, more storms to develop. And uh, with another outflow boundary to our north, that uh, that possibility is definitely there. Well, let's look at the temperatures. 85 Kerrville, 89 Hondo, 87 in Uvalde. We're up to 91 in Del Rio, by the way. So some hot temperatures out there. 93 Pleasanton, one of the hot spots. 82 Bernie Stage, 86 right now in Comfort. And the satellite picture. Well, you can very clearly see where the boundary is. It, it is producing clouds and now starting to get some development out ahead of it. So if we're going to see more showers or a pop up storm, I'm guessing it's going to be in this area right here. Now behind this, there's another boundary here and the models keep picking up on this boundary as producing some showers and storms this afternoon. So it, it, that chance is still there. It's just that uh, that situation where most of us stay dry. If, if you're lucky, you're in the right place at the right time. You may get one of these uh, storms. The big spin up here is associated with the storm system that's uh, moving through Texas. And really, it's on the back side of it where we have more storm chances today. In fact, West Texas is in line to get some severe weather today. Storm Prediction Center puts them and a scattered severe range. So it's where more severe weather, or at least scattered severe storms are possible. Amarillo down to Midland. And just the way the upper level winds are, if some of those storms can gather into a complex, then that may work its way down into our area tonight. Chances of that happening are low. Everything's got to kind of come together perfectly, but some models are hinting at that. So we'll keep that in the forecast. And the Storm Prediction Center even has us in a risk for a few isolated severe storms. Uh, as we look at the forecast here, 20% chance, and I, I mentioned the models are pretty consistent on developing some of these storms by say four or five o'clock this afternoon. We'll leave in that 20% chance of rain, then a break. And then if we do see a complex of showers and storms overnight, that probably arrives or at least limps in here by early tomorrow morning. This is around 6 a.m. So some lingering showers before everything moves out and then we clear out tomorrow and that's that's the end of things for at least for rain chances. KSAT 12 hour forecast, 20% chance at three o'clock, 93. We'll get up to about 96 by five o'clock, 20% chance of rain. 
Uh, any evening plans, just know it'll be hot and there is that outside chance for a little bit of rain. That goes right into tonight, 82, 11 o'clock, 80 by midnight. And then uh, 99 coming up tomorrow. The record tomorrow, by the way, is 100. 101 Sunday, 103 Monday. The record on Monday is 101. So we are forecasting a record triple digits basically all next week. Mm. It's uh, pretty incredible. It's going to be very hot, guys. Ooh, it's going to hurt. Thanks. That 103 looks painful, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Nothing better than a wild and crazy finish for a uh, baseball game in high school. Yeah, I'll tell you, Reagan and Lake Travis are two of the top 6A baseball teams in the area, so it's appropriate. They are facing off in the regional final, and I'll tell you what, Reagan walked off the Cavaliers last night. Talk about a thrilling finish, and O'Connor softball is absolutely on a roll and hoping to scoop up at least one more victory coming up. Reagan was all kinds of excited after a walk-off win last night in Big Board Sports. The Reagan Rattlers walked off the Lake Travis Cavaliers last night in game one of that 6A regional final. Bottom of the fourth, Rattlers down one nothing when Brennan Greer knocks a base head right up the middle. Cole Tabor slides home safe as the crowd erupts. We're tied at one. Moments later, Jacob King blasts one deep to center field and over the outfielder's head. Greer scores as King gets the third safely with a triple and Reagan leads two to one. Cavaliers answer in the top of the fifth. Ethan Calder sends a base hit down the left field line. Daniel Ripple scores and this game is tied at two. This one will go to extra, still tied at two. Bottom of the ninth until Britton Moore comes through with a chopper that gets past the second baseman. C.J. Hall races home for the game winning run as the Rattlers storm the field. What a finish. Reagan takes game one three to two in nine innings. Innings. That's just what you practice for all week. Team did such a great job of, um, you know, sticking through it again. I mean, it was a hard-fought game. They're a good team. We've been through it so much. We've played so many great teams and and had to had to fight fight so hard to to win. And um, that's what we did today. Game two tonight, 7.30 at Concordia University in Austin. In the UIL softball playoffs, O'Connor would take on El Paso America's High School in the Class 6A state semifinals later today. O'Connor's coming off a thrilling regional final when they swept West Laco two games to none. The Panthers are a perfect 7-0 this postseason. And for the seniors, advancing to the state semis feels amazing. And man, they are oh so close to winning it all. From being a freshman on varsity to a senior, this is I've always wanted to go to state, and it's very special that I get to do that with this group of girls. These, this group of girls is very talented and just very special, and I'm just very excited. It means everything. I mean, since freshman year, we've been just working and striving toward the goal of making it to state. So being here as a senior, it's been amazing. It, it's been awesome. It, it's been a fun ride, and um, you know we're we're excited to be there. But like we told the girls, you know, it's we're going on a business trip, and we're we're there to to take it one game at a time and be in that final game. O'Connor and El Paso Americas will square off today at 4 p.m. at McCombs Field in Austin. In the bigs, the Tampa Bay Rays beat the Texas Rangers 3-1 yesterday, and Texas will open a three-game home series tonight with the Seattle Mariners. Twins and Tigers top of the third. Twins Luis Arais hits a hard line drive to short left, and Cody Clemens makes a great diving catch for the out. Check out the replay as he flashes the leather to make a spectacular, spectacular grab. He is the son of Roger Clemens. And in Texas League Baseball, the Flying Chanclas beat the Tulsa Drillers 6-5. Good for him. Um, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Roger Clemens' kid. I didn't know that. That was funny. <laughs> I was going to say it's something. It's been about a long week for uh, David. David's David. like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everyday catch. How about those, uh, those, those <laughs> girls and boys, the Reagan Rattlers yes. and the O'Connor Panthers? Congratulations Absolutely. and, and continued good success. Good luck. Yeah. Let's head over to SA Live. Okay, we've had tacos on the show, <laughs> thousands of them, but you've never seen tacos like this. No, and Paul Morales with Tacos Pukui is here to show us their signature dish. And tell them why you are not the average food truck. Well, oh, thank you guys for having me today. Uh, we're going to display our uh, panza taco and our beet taco. Basically, we use very local, hyper-local ingredients. We try to source from as much 
good, responsible places as we and can. flavors, flavors, mm -hmm. more flavors, and oh, more yeah. on top of flavors. Flavors on top of flavors, yes. All, All right. right, time for a little bit of magic today. Yes, magician Francis Minotti is here to give us a sneak peek at your performance this weekend, right? That's at right. the Magician Theater? Yeah, thank you. Another mic. Uh, Mike, do you have a dollar bill on you? He sure. always carries cash. I, I always carry cash. <laughs> it's yes. rare. No one carries right. it anymore. This there is you go. something Excellent. bigger than a dollar. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So, uh, when I was a kid, uh, you, you probably heard of the, uh, the term uh, uh, silver certificate, right? Yes. Concept yes, of I silver, remember. And money being backed by silver, right? Right. Well, as a kid, I thought that meant it was literally backed by silver. So, what I discovered uh, as a kid that meant that if I folded it and kind of folded it in half and into quarters and eighths, yeah. it could change the uh, the look of the money to be uh, actual uh, silver, silver dollar, right? Wow. Get the sleeves rolled out to make it look like we're not cheating. Wow. I, mean, I am cheating with not. I'll say I'll, uh, I'll change this back because it has okay. to go. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. <laughs> and that is your dollar bill. I'll be. Wow. Dollar. Thank you very much. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, you can also be amazed if you go check out the immersive Van Gogh exhibit. We go take you inside and give you a sneak peek to see these great works of art in a great immersive way. Top Gun, number one movie at the uh, at the theaters, and what is your your name, your call sign name? Mm. <laughs> you gotta come up with it. Let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. Right now on KSET.com, it is June and those temperatures are staying up there. And if you're trying to get out of the house, there's plenty to do around town. And that includes a couple of new exhibits at the Witty. There's also the Juneteenth Family Festival and the Bud Light Pride River Parade. To see a list of all the events happening this month, go to KSET.com. All right, I want to show you the radar real quickly because we've got a pop-up storm. We are seeing a lightning strike or two associated with this. Uh, just south and west of New Braunfels, right along I-35. It looks a little distorted because it's right by the radar site, but as we zoom in, right there along I-35, uh, again, just south and southwest of New Braunfels, in between New Braunfels and San Antonio. We'll see a few more pop-ups like this throughout the afternoon. You can check the KSAT weather app for the latest on the radar. We'll keep you posted there, too. Otherwise, after today, it's all about the heat. Beautiful digits. Much of next week, guys. Smooth sailing into those triple digits. Thank you. I always find it interesting. The magician on there will, will take Mike's dollar bill and turn it into something really nice mm -hmm. and then turn it back to the dollar. In fact, Mike, they didn't get to keep the nice thing they made. Well, can you imagine if he had a $20 bill in Ooh. his pocket? Be a $20 coin? I don't know. Be nice. Make some money off of this deal. Come on, Mike. Work on that. Yeah. That's There's a an angle to this. Yes. That's a live <laughs> starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square, this is SA Live. A couple of students mm -hmm. just graduated from CAS, the STEM program there, Cong just this morning. Just this morning, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I heard them when they were cheering, when they saw each other saw right out there here. taking pictures oh, and everything no. too. And, and all the graduates, again, congratulations. So they were talking about having a 20 in my pocket, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know when the last time that was. Yeah, anyway. You usually have 50s and 100s, stop it. <laughs> yeah, right, good afternoon everyone, I'm Mike Oster Age. <laughs> and I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Okay, so of course, Top Gun Great came movie. out. Great I know, movie. I know. You haven't seen it yet. Have you? Oh, yes, I have. I'm oh, the one did. who told you. That's right. I saw it. Have you seen it? Never mind. Hi. It's only Good an hour it. show. We're back. But anyway, we both saw it. We both really liked it. So that got us thinking what would our call sign be? Like, what would your Top Gun name Forgetful be? Forgetful for me right now. Apparently, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, apparently, yes. So, um, you know, obviously for you, I mean, I think Silver Fox, right? Oh, yes. Can we really? Yes. More? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, that's a absolutely true, okay? You are our silver fox on the show. Um, or you could be your other name, Facebook. <laughs> and for those who don't remember why, this really? would be his Bring other name, again? here's why. <laughs> Yeah, you know, every chance we can get to play this, you think we're not? <laughs> you have to start carrying your phone around and videotaping us. <laughs> uh, oh, this is just, I could watch this. Uh, all right, okay, we'll it's move on. It's only an hour show, okay, so, enough of the Facebook. Anyway, I'd be, you know, Fearless Fiona because I got to pick my name. And you, were, you weren't there, you weren't there when we were making these this morning, okay? Um, or, um, you know, this is kind of more accurate. <laughs> Big thanks to Ted 
for getting that made this Mine morning on Photoshop. Mine would be up with them, so. <laughs> It is the first week. Wait, in. wait, oh, you gotta tell, hold on. Okay. All right, so we wanna know, of course, what's your call sign? There is the website, of course, uh, uh, that you can go to. That's gonna be linked. Is that linked? It's what's your call sign. It's yeah. what's your call sign. Okay, just Google that, <laughs> and, then, and that will be there. There's a link. Yes, the voice in my head said yes, there's a link on our as seen on, uh, on SA Live. Now, can I go here? Yes, now it's your turn. It's the first weekend of summer for a lot of families, so how about kicking off with something really exciting? Our first guest has amazed people around the world, even fooled some of the most famous magicians, and he's only in the Alamo City for this weekend, but right now he's giving us a sneak peek at his performance. Yes, magician Francis Minotti is here, of course, to kind of amaze us, right? What as you, your as call expected. Sign? Magic man? <laughs> Magic what? man. At this point, the delusionist right now. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Okay. All right, you got a trick for us. I do, off, right? absolutely. Uh, no, well, so magic is obviously it's illusion, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's based on our imagination. Do you both have a, have a pretty good imagination? I, I think, think so. so. Okay, okay. Good. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, we'll go with both of you. Let's, uh, Mike, we'll start with you. But I, this is not a full pack of cards. You can tell there's a lot of reasons for that. Okay. Um, but uh, the reason is every time I do this trick, I give a card away at the end. So go ahead and pick one out. Maybe one that has a, a you're going to write on it. Yeah, that's okay. perfect. Great. Now go ahead and take it out. I can You'll take notice it. You'll notice there's actually a couple of fours of spades there. Uh, the reason is it's from old junkie decks. You're going to mark this so it's the only one like it in the world. Okay. So go ahead and write your name right across the face there, big bold letters. And that way you know it's the only one like it in the world, right? Good spelling. Okay. Fantastic. Hey, thank you. <laughs> You, I can. I am appreciating. Not the best penmanship in the world, but hey, what the heck? I also so. have to call back to that little surfing thing where you had fallen off the. You know what? Surfing. Is that what it was? A surf, is that, I uh, had never wakeboarded before. I, I can't do it either. I'm good I, with my hands. I can't do the balance. Don't no. forget that. I'm surprised I'm not falling over right now. So, but, but, uh, Fiona, let's yes. try this with uh, yes. Mike's card here. We're gonna we use your imagination first. Okay. And imagine if I put the card on the table, okay. and then imagine it sort of rising up to uh, the top. No can you way. imagine that? Oh my God! Oh, it worked for you. It worked. It for, that's, worked. That's, that's good. That's good. I didn't know that my means you have a good imagination. So powerful. So, uh, well, let's let's do this again. Then, Mike, I'll the same thing for you. Instead okay. of on the bottom, we'll put it back about halfway down in the middle, like that, and imagine it sort of rising to the top. Did that? Did, oh. Did it looked it looked good to you, and it, it looked good to you as well. Okay, good. So, well, let's try. I'll have it a little bit differently. Why don't you take the card yourself? So, you take. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Right I take the card in your right hand. Okay. And then the deck in your left hand, and then go and slide the card back in the middle wherever you want. Just, Just anywhere like yeah, that. That's fine. You're you're doing all the. And then do some whatever you think a magician does. Wiggle your fingers over. Yeah, and imagine it rising up to the top. How'd you do? Turn Very it over. Very natural. <laughs> that's. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do that. Wait, it irritates wait, me Shana, too. Right. Oh, it was right there. there. No, it was there. It's, it's disappeared. <laughs> well, well, that's, I, it, I know. It's infuriating. Let's, let's finish this one once and for and all. You did so, it. I know. <laughs> Fiona, you're going to do okay. this one. Oh, so boy, just to right. finish this part okay. once and for all, what's going to happen? Uh, Fiona, actually, we'll take uh, Mike's card okay. and uh, go ahead and take it in your hand for me, please. Uh, what I'm going to have you do is we'll have you put it about. Or just say stop for me anyway. Stop. Good. Well, uh, okay. I'll take the card and I'll put it exactly where you said. So it's not going on the top or the bottom. It's actually going in the middle this time, uh -huh. right? Back here, all the way inside. Uh -huh. In fact, back inside the box as well. Now, Fiona, what I need you <laughs> no to do for just no a moment, uh -huh. hold the deck for me, just okay. hold nice and tight with just one hand. You got it, nice uh -huh. and tight. Yep. All right. Now use your imagination and imagine for the first time in your life you have an invisible friend. Or, or for the first time, admit it. That's right. Give me the number of my or therapist sorry. after okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine the invisible friend for real. Imagine you have to commit to this. Imagine the invisible friend is standing right here between you and me, and imagine them reaching in and pulling one card out, preferably Mike's. But just imagine okay. what it would look like okay. for their invisible fingers to grab uh -huh. it. Relax a little bit. Open your. That's good. Just imagine the card being. Oh, that's that's really good. Mike, reach across, go ahead and grab Look it. Look at grab your it, face. Go ahead, go and touch it. Did it. You have to take it out. Mike, know. dump the rest of the cards out. You want to make sure there's no <laughs> strings or any writers, anything, magnets, anything in there. That's just a <laughs> pack of cards and a really good imagination. Oh my god. You fooled Penn and Teller. I did. Yes, tell did. us about yeah. that. Uh, so it's a, I'm sure you've seen the show at some point. It's Penn and Teller mm -hmm. fool us. Uh, it's a, the object of the game is to fool these two top-notch, uh, brilliant magicians out in Vegas. Uh, first off, if you have a, if you get a chance to see their show, go and see it. Right now they're in Australia, so you won't catch them there. Okay. But, uh, but it's a great show. The show, the TV show, the focus is. While it's supposedly you're supposed to go on and fool Penn and Teller, the real focus, and they, they kind of don't tell you this up front, is they want to feature as much good, diverse, interesting magic as they can on television to show that it's not just pulling rabbits out of a hat or sawing a person in half, right? So they bring magicians from all over the world and put them on. I, was, I had the opportunity to be on the first U.S. season. It started in the U.K. They brought it to the U.S. in 2015. I was invited to be on, and I did a trick that involves some Scrabble tiles and a word 
And I am doing that in the shows this weekend. I was going to say, so yeah, yeah. So if you go to the shows this weekend, all right, let's get that information agency. In up. fact, if you want to watch the Fool Us thing and see it and then watch it in person, you can say, maybe I can figure it out. Oh, that would be cool to right? do. Yeah. Mike's going to be there. Yeah, <laughs> right, all right, you can catch Magician <laughs> Francis Minotti this weekend at the Magician Agency Theater. The show starts at 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow and at 2 p.m. on Sunday. You can get tickets online. For a link, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. I don't know which amazing me more when the thing was in my hands or when it came up out of it yeah so. I think it was when you did it mm -hmm. all right after that if you're looking for some time to self-care this summer why not bring some zen like serenity into your home yes okay and who says you can't bring the spa into your happy space our Jen Tobias Dresky gets some easy tips from a local designer those vacation vibes into your home, it can be done. On today's Happy Space, we visit with interior designer Cami Malaga, and she's going to share how you can bring the spa into your home. My name is Cami Malaga. I'm the principal designer and owner at CM Interiors, and I've been interior decorating and designing for about five years now. I'd love for you to check out my style, my work, at cm.interiors on Instagram or you can visit my website at camimalagainteriors.com. And here we are in Cami's beautiful bathroom. Thank you for having us. It's so cozy in here. Thank you for being here. So I'm really excited about bringing the spa home and you have some great ideas for our viewers today on how they can make it feel more like a spa in their own home. It sounds amazing. So what are we starting with, Cami? All right, well, nothing shouts spa like fresh, fluffy white towels. And um, these occasionally will go on sale actually annually at Costco for under $5. So what I do is buy three or four and replace the, the old ones and um, yeah, stock up on these. Let me, I have to feel that. Oh yeah, yeah. isn't Those that great? Very soft. Yes, that and very Costco. absorbent. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, very nice. And yeah. what is it about the white color, would you say? That you know, it's just, it's clean and it's simple and it's fresh and it's, uh, it, it just, it's peaceful really. Yes. Which is what we're going. Yeah, exactly. I love how these are displayed. This is part of also, right, making it feel more like a spa. Absolutely. Take some glass jars, canisters, whatever you have. I got these at, at Home Goods for less than ten dollars. Um, these are things that we use every day, really. So um, keep them out. Keep them out. And, and I like it's not like toothpaste. It's red or blue. Yes. It's clean and it's white and it it says spa. Again, we're so. consistent with the clean and white that we have going. Yes, here. absolutely. And you can't have that spa vibe without the robes, right? No, you sure can't. <laughs> Never been to a spa without a robe before. So I've got this robe and it's it's so plush and comfortable and it's just so luxurious to get in after a shower or a bath. Um, I change it out seasonally so when it's warmer I have a little bit of a shorter one and, and less heavy but I love it. I love how easy it is too to access here with your Yes, shower. right? Right out of the shower. That's right. Very nice. And and the rug and also the artwork is something to keep in mind as well. Yes, it is. It, it, you know, it's unexpected. You wouldn't find a, a nice a rug that you would see maybe downstairs or in a more populated area, a living room or something. Um, but bring it into a bathroom, especially when you've got mostly neutral colors. It's fun to add some color and some artwork that you wouldn't expect to see also in a bathroom. I can't help but notice this gorgeous shower oh, behind you. you. Yes. Um, and let's talk about what you have going there to make it feel more like a spa. Okay, okay. Fresh greens, eucalyptus. You turn that hot water on and that eucalyptus just starts to smell beautifully. And, um, and you can and it just hang pretty. it like that? Yes, absolutely. I got these local, just at a florist, and wrap some twine around there, hang it from your shower head, and call it good. It looks beautiful, too. And it lasts for weeks, really. And what an easy so. way to bring the spa home. I yeah. love it. Okay, so many people use essential oils, but you shared a great tip on how you can utilize them along with the eucalyptus and everything in the shower. Yes, absolutely. And I just kind of started doing this, and I can't believe how amazing it is. I just sprinkle a few drops on the shower floor, and again, that starts to heat up, and it's like a whole aromatherapy experience. All the different oils and just put them on the floor. I've never tried that. Great tip. Mm -hmm. I also like what you told me earlier about adding a furniture piece if you need more storage. Yes, yeah, a lot of people do, and it's another way of just bringing, kind of elevating your space. Mm -hmm. um, I bought a piece of furniture off of Craigslist and stripped it down, and I now use it to display pretty perfumes and other storage things in, on the, in the drawers. And we also, we talk about the oils, the eucalyptus, but also the scent of candles, right? Yes. Let's talk about how that helps add to it. Okay, it just creates such a great ambiance, right? It's just the low light, um, it's calming, and as a bonus, it smells delicious. Yes. Um, and I like to do that at night, just to kind of de-stress a little bit, spend five minutes even, just mm -hmm. 
while I'm getting ready for bed and then maybe transition from here into my bedroom and listen to some soft music and some meditation music and just relax. We, we know we need that these yes. days, right? She does a great job as you can see here. Thank you, Thank you so much, Cammie. And uh, I hope you can have a spa at home with all of these great tips. Yes. Thank you, Cammie. Thank you. Okay, the tile in the shower is cool. Yeah, you like that's the tub? pretty cool. Uh, that tub, look at that tub. Yeah, those mm. big windows and everything. Yeah. Oh, okay, for more on Happy Space uh, inspiration, <laughs> head over to SALive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just scan the QR code right there on the bottom of your screen. Lose yourself in the ultimate immersive art experience. We take you to an exhibit that makes you feel like you are in the art. But first, the name will catch your attention, but the food will keep you coming back for a whole lot more. We try the signature taco from a local food truck and find out how it got its spooky name next on SA Live.